Reading from Isaiah chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 1 down to verse 8. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraph, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I'm ruined, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live code in his hands, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And he will go for us. And I said, Here I am. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is one of my favorite Bible passages. It is a life transforming story of God's forgiveness and call to service. I believe God is here to change our lives once again as we study this story together. But before we begin, let us pray. Father, the hour has come for you to glorify your name. I decrease that you may increase in me. Fill me with your power to speak your mind to each, every one of us. So that at the end of the day, your name alone will be glorified. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The story begins with a powerful statement. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah went to the temple, just like he did every other Sabbath. Who knows what was going on in his life that day? Who knows what his week had been like? Who knows if he was even thinking about God and heavenly things? And then it happened. He saw the Lord. He really saw the Lord. It was not a fairy tale or mumbo jumbo story. It happened. He saw the Lord. And the angels were singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And with that, Isaiah saw himself for who he was. He saw his position before the Almighty God. A man, a human being, a sinner, a person struggling with life and with himself, a person who is lost, a person with a lot of bad in him, not the kind of person a holy God would want to have around. And that is how Isaiah felt that day when the Lord appeared to him in the temple. So the question here is, how are you feeling this morning? Are you feeling well done 
by sin and pain? Are you caught up in the things that make you feel terrible? If so, you are not alone. Perhaps you have hurt someone's feelings this week. Maybe you have lost track of yourself and done something you are not proud of. Perhaps you are angry with someone and you can't seem to let go of that anger. Whatever it is, think about what is making you feel terrible. Don't be afraid. Allow God to put a mirror up to your soul. Search your heart in the presence of a holy God. Where do you fall short? What would you change about yourself if you could? If there is one thing Isaiah chapter 6 makes clear, along with the rest of the scriptures, is that God meets us where we are. He meets us where we are. Zacchaeus was up a tree in Luke chapter 19, and Jesus met him. Peter was fishing in Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22, and Jesus met him. Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians in Acts chapter 9, and God arrested him. God is here to meet you where you are. Where are you this morning, my brothers and sisters? I know you are in the building, St. Paul's Church. What a full building. A beautiful place to be, to fellowship. But where is your soul? At the sound of the angel's voice, the doorpost and the threshold shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. And Isaiah saw himself and where he was. His body was in God's temple, but his soul was somewhere else. Woe to me, Isaiah cried. I'm ruined. I'm a man with unclean lips. I'm not worthy to be here. I'm not qualified to be here. This is the sad realization that hits Isaiah with such overwhelming force. We are sinners. We live among sinners. We live in sin-filled times. The society that we live in today is full of evil, wickedness, sexual immorality going on. And yet, like Isaiah, this is the realization that opens up to the possibility of forgiveness. It is about the grace of God and relying on him. God is holy, but we are not. But God is also filled with love and grace and forgiveness. As soon as Isaiah confessed his sin before God, one of the seraphs flew to him with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it, he touched Isaiah's mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And then something amazing happened. God gave this unclean but forgiving man a job to do, a calling. The Lord said, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. I am here, O Lord. Here I am, send me. 
What a transformation. What a story of conversion. What a display of God's grace freely given. God comes and saves us. God seeks us out. And if we are open to his forgiveness, he gives it to us without a cost. You don't have to pay anything. It's free. Just offer yourself to him. Allow Jesus to come into your life. And then God calls us to serve him. He gives us a purpose that is beyond ourselves. So the question here again is, is there anything holding you back from saying to God, here I am, send me. We are invited, just as Isaiah was many years ago, to confess our sins. We should not be afraid to name our sins before God. He knows everything we are doing, even behind the closed door. He knows. And we cannot run away from him. We can't hide away from the almighty God. He sees you. For the assurance and pardon we receive from God is even stronger than the confession. Think of the image of the seraph flying to Isaiah with a life coal from the altar saying, your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Hallelujah. This is how vibrant and powerful God's forgiveness is. Allow God to come to you this morning. Allow God to atone for your sins and then be sent into the world, into the lost and broken world. Do you think the world is going to get better? Do you think it's not going to get better? It's going to get worse. And we must be strong in the Lord. The battle is too heavy. But with Jesus, we will conquer. And we have to carry out the message, that message of the forgiveness and good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah was saved and called by God. He was a mighty prophet, and we still benefit from his story to this day. What is your special day, my brothers and sisters? Is it the year that you give your life to Jesus? That year that you gave your life to Jesus. You remember that day? Do you still remember the date when it happened? When you are on fire for God. Are you still on fire for him? Do you still remember that day when you give your life to Jesus? I was born into a Christian home. Prayer, Bible study, and going to church every Sunday where a family routine, you must go to church. By the grace of God, I am 32 years as a child of God. 14 years as a priest in Anglican communion. But I don't know about you. How old are you in Christ Jesus when you give your life to Jesus? Do you still remember that day? Can you be bold enough to say, yes, I remember. And I'm still on fire for him. When you move from one place to another, telling people 
about Jesus. The love of Jesus. When you are on fire sharing the gospel without fear. Today we have become so lukewarm that we don't even read our Bible. Talk more of telling people about Jesus. Are you still on fire for him? Do you still tell people about Jesus? We need to win more souls for him. The days are evil. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 that it is by grace we have been saved through faith. And this is not from ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works. If you haven't experienced it yet or haven't replied to God's call on your life, now is the time. Nobody knows the hour when Jesus will return. But the truth is still remain that Jesus is coming back again. And we must be ready. You know the funny thing about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Nobody knows. That's the funny thing. And that's why we must be prepared. When it happens, we are up there. And I still ask again, are you on fire for him? When you give your life to Jesus, that day something happened, isn't it? You have to remember, that day you give your life to Jesus, something happened in your life. Is that thing still there? That's the question. Here I am, send me. For God's forgiveness always draws us into service rather than away from it. So the question is, how about you? For some, it may be, I love Jesus, but I talk a little too much behind other people's back. Oh, I love Jesus, but I use words that hurt people sometimes. Oh, I love Jesus, but I just don't like myself. I've had someone said, heaven must be a wonderful place, but I will never be there. And I asked him why. And he said, because I'm not good enough. And I wonder if you've been in that category. Always say, I'm not good enough. No matter what we have done, no matter where we have been, true faith in Christ Jesus, me and you can approach that holy throne of God with confidence. And as I conclude, I want to leave you with this food for thought. Then Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And instead of saying, I'm not good enough, Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. Are you saying that you're not good enough? Or are you saying, Lord, here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. I am here. 
O Lord, here I am, send me.